we just got played in this episode and whoever was online who said that Claire Carol was still alive my hat is off to you because that lady is alive I just finished watching the following season 2 episode 9 unmask and it hit the ground running, and it ran, and it's still running. And by next episode, we will continue running. Where do I begin? I damn near lost my voice, but we're getting to it. We're going to get there, so here we go. Micah sees Carrie Cook on TV, and she's all talking about Lily and how Lily's created her own family and um, she's creating her own legacy. And Joe basically says, well, Micah, I created my legacy. And he's like, no, I want to make a splash like Lily. Your legacy is dead. And I was like, those fighting words. So Joe calls Jana for help. Max talks to Carrie about Strauss being interrogated. Oh, no, 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 not Max. Ryan talks to Carrie about um, Dr. Strauss being interrogated. They're keeping him in some weird place interrogating him. She basically tells Ryan, I will keep my mouth shut if you feed me a bigger story. And she wants to buy him dinner because he saved her life. Max Hardy returns to Ryan's apartment with coffee and she sees Mike and Mike has this little towel on. And I was like, get him, Iceman from X-Men. I'm like, get him, Iceman. He's very cute in person. I saw him back in 05. He is adorable in person. But back to this. So Mike is like on the phone. He's talking to his mom. Then he drops his towel. He turns around, covers himself with his pants and sees Max looking. I said, something going on between Mike and Max. I called it. So if it pops up, I called it. Mike is basically like, he's okay. And Max says, there are... 2,600 and I think 66 or 6 women linked to the whole leak in the FBI having to do with Joe Carroll, but 6 women stand out, and the one that mainly stands out, which Max thinks is a fluke, is Agent Mendez. Okay, Mike is trying to make some type of tape showing the world who he is, but unfortunately he keeps flubbing his lines and he's wearing this weird um, skeleton mask. I'm like, weirdo, of course. I'm better when I just feel it, he says, rather than do the words. And I'm like, okay, you do whatever you want. He's like, yeah. And basically, Joe echoes what I'm saying. Yeah, um, you do that. I was like, exactly. Emma and Robert are tasked for a mission. Micah wants to add this dude, Lance, who cut some girl's ear off because he didn't like how she looked. I said, yet another crazy home to the crazies. I am so hoarse right now after screaming at the end. I'm like, what? Ah! And they said that he's, uh, Micah says that Lance is perfect to accompany them to New York City. I said, what crazy is Lance bringing? So Joe's annoyed with Micah and is worried about Lance being crazier than he should be. Um, Emma says, you know what, I'm not the same little girl from a year ago. In other words, you don't have to worry about me. I got this. Ryan doesn't think that Agent Mendez is a part of this. But they also learn about Jana, uh, Mendez's wife. Ryan approaches Mendez when she's outside. She's like going somewhere. And he tells her he pulled their security clearance and how come Deborah Parker's file was accessed six times and Mendez, as usual, is being all mean and like, da -da 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 -da. I have no part in this. I don't know what you're talking about. You're crazy. So um, she goes to her. She's about to get in the car and then she goes to her trunk, puts her car keys down, puts something down, takes this thing out of her cell phone and basically um, ditches like her cell phone in her trunk and gets in the um, taxi and drives away, not knowing that Max was the woman that bumped into her earlier when she was, before she met up with um, Ryan Murphy. She put a trace on her. Mendez is fishy about the details, like I said, and she ditches her car for a taxi, which is pretty suspect to me. Emma and Robert are preparing to leave for NYC. NYC. Emma claims, go big or go home. And then here comes crazy Lance with his freaky self, Joe is, like, giving them a message to take to Carrie Cook. It's like this little disc. Meanwhile, um, Lance is removing the plates of um, the car, the Georgia plates off the car, I guess, so the car won't be traced. Robert has his eye on Emma, but Emma is Joe's. Remember that. Don't step to that. You will die. Robert, Black Widow Spider, she will get you killed. This is what I'm saying. Um, Emma says, I don't believe in a relationship. Someone always ends up dead. Duh, Jacob. Paul, 
and whomever else it was she was messing with with those seven people she lived with in uh, New Jersey. Mendez pulls up to Janice's house. She sees these two people who are inside. their their um their close friends. Gina needs to speak to Jana. Jana's all acting all weird and like trying to ignore her. Then she's like, I need to talk to you alone. Mike is praying about Julia. He seeks advice from Joe, but Joe says, I don't know anything because I had my wife killed. And Claire is his one true regret. Jana is a bit off. Like, um, from what they're trying to say is like, um, I think Mendez said that Jan is trying to say that she lost her mind after postpartum depression after having the son. Jan says she had a psychotic break and she killed the neighbor's dog. Uh, this is what Mendez, not Jan. Mendez mentions that, that she had a psychotic break and she killed the neighbor's dog because the neighbor's dog was out there attacking and killing people. Um, Mendez mentions Joe Carroll and she knows that Janet was using her security clearance. She's like, we're done. You ruined my life. You are not going to do it again. Janet gets this knife out and stabs her in the stomach. I think she kind of stabs her again, pulls out the knife as, um, Mendez is falling down, kicks her and spits on her. I'm like, damn. Joe Carroll knows how to pick the crazies and he just picked the insane Z's from the crazies. Like, she's just nuts. Brian and Mike pull up. It's snowing outside. The friends are like asking about Jana, um, about Mendez to Jana. Jana's like, oh, nothing's wrong. She's like, just I gotta go upstairs. She's like, continue drinking. So Jana goes upstairs. She starts pulling out this lockbox, pulling out this money, his gun, all this stuff, putting in this duffel bag. Meanwhile, Ryan and Mike are met by um, Jana's um, African American friend, who um, takes Ryan to the garage because he's asking where's Agent Mendez. Meanwhile, um. Mike is looking around in the house. So when they get to the garage, they see Gina Mendez laying down there in her own blood. She's still kind of alive. The friend, um, he tells the friend to call the cops. And then Ryan comes rushing in with a gun. He tells the other friend to take the kids outside. Jana pulls a gun on Mike and, and Ryan. Ryan asks about Joe, do you know where he is? She's like, is that all you care about? Look around. The world is falling apart, and all you can see is where is Joe? It doesn't matter anymore. The next thing you know, this chick pulls out, takes her gun, shoots herself in the head. She's dead. Did I mention she dyed her hair blonde? So it's no longer goth Janet. It's like blondie Leslie Bibb. Blonde. I gotta remember her from Popular. Love that show. Wish it. That's where Glee came from. Side note. Glee came from Popular, but we'll get back to that in another video later. Um... So she kills herself. Julie is taken to Micah's room. She's taken past all the people in red. Some people are looking at her like, ugh. Some other people just can't even look at her. They're so over her. And I'm like... Anyway, um... Jana feels that Micah's going too far. She's trying to tell, like, Micah, listen, Joe is playing you. And Micah's like, Joe is helping me find my true self. And Jan's like, we are not monsters or killers. And Micah's like, my faith is evolving. Why not you? I want you to believe in me. Jana so he's Jana somehow gets this gun and it has no bullets in it. And she's like, click, click. And I'm like, dang. I don't know why she either didn't see this or dang. That's all I keep saying. So when Joe appears. He comes up behind Janet, grabs her by her neck with something that's like strangling her, and then takes his hand, and I guess he crushes her windpipe. She's out, Bane style. So, um, Micah thanks him, and I'm just like, damn, so you're going to Joe Carroll route. Alrighty then. Mendez asks about her kids as they're pull as the um ambulance is pulling her out, and she apologizes. She thought Janet was okay. Ryan's not mad at her because Ryan knows she didn't even know. Jan, Ryan got Jana's cell phone and some files from her computer. And um, the next scene is them at the Old Town Bookstore, which reminds me of a Barnes & Noble in New York. This is me being a New Yorker, going back and forth in New York. It's an old Barnes & Noble store they used to have years ago that they closed out. It reminded me of that Barnes & Noble. So they walk into the store. Robert comes in first. I mean, Lance comes in first. Then Robert, then Emma comes in with this black, black wig on, with these glasses on. So they arrive for Carrie Cook's book signing. Um, let's see. Mike can't get anything off of um, Jana's um, 
computer or her cell phone because she's a blogger. They can't figure it out. But Max breaks the encryption. Carrie Cook, they learn, is the next target. And she's signing at the Old Town Bookstore. And it's happening at that moment. So they all race out. Carrie's signing the books. And at this point when this is happening, even before the scene starts, I'm like, you know what? The following likes to keep me from places. No more. No art galleries. I'm freaked out about the subway and book signings. I'm avoiding it. If you add anything else in here in New York, I'm going to avoid the crap out of it. I don't even want to go to Mercer Street after seeing Lily run down there. I don't even want to deal with that one. <laughs> just kidding. But, okay, sorry, not sorry, but just kind of kidding. But anyway, um, I'm never going to a book signing again, so I'm telling myself. Um, Ryan and Lance bend down and put these... The, Ryan, Robert and Lance been down. They put these like white masks. I don't know what these white things are. And Emma's asking for her book to be signed. So Carrie's like, who do you want to sign it to? Joe Carroll. And they start, all of a sudden, Robert and Lance start stabbing people and killing people. Char Carrie tries to escape. She sees a, an exit but is cornered by Lance. I mean, by Robert and Emma. They make her share a video with the world. And they say, if you don't share this video, we're going to come back. We're going to kill you. So Lance, I think Emma and Robert escape as they hear the cop cars coming. Lance hides like he's a hides like he's a victim, forgetting that he has all this blood all on the side of his face. So um, Ryan and Mike go inside the bookstore and they see Carrie, and she's like distraught. She says she saw one guy in Emma Hill, so she didn't even see Lance. Lance was like a special ops. Lance was not seen. So, um, she asked Ryan to call her later, and Max kind of shoots him a look like, don't you call that chick? Mm -mm. Lance is still walking around in there. He asked to leave. And Ryan sees him. He knows there's something wrong. This dude pulls a knife on the cop. Just as he's about to spin the cop around, they get stabbed him. Ryan shoots him. He's dead. Everyone returns, and Micah says this is a monumental moment. Carrie reveals the video on the nightly news, and it's the video starts, and Micah's already, and you hear Joe Carroll's voice, and Micah just starts spazzing, like has this spasm, like he's been poisoned. So you hear the, um, I can give you a synop like a, a short summary of what he said. It's Joe, like I said, Joe Carroll's voice. Um, I am Joe Carroll, and I am very much alive. I am bring, I come bringing salvation. I have come to restore reverence. Nowhere will be safe. You will never feel safe again. This is the age of Joe Carroll. It's time to go home now. He either says they are all or we are all waiting for you. Now I said in previous videos, if you guys have watched them, that Joe Carroll was just biding his time and I hit the nail right on top of the head because I knew Joe was not going to let Micah run him. But I'm getting ahead of myself because I've got another part to tell you before this is over. Carrie has been through a lot. One day all of this will be over. Um, this, is, this is Max Hardy talking and you will have a life. What you did freed Micah. And um, he has received life's greatest reward. Okay, now one day you'll have a life. Then, um... I believe this is um, Robert saying this. What you did was freed Micah. He has received life's greatest reward. Spread the word and tell everyone the glorious news. This is what um, Joe is telling. Joe and Robert are talking to each other. So Joe was talking about, Robert was talking about freeing Micah. And Joe was talking about spreading the word and the glorious news. Emma must stay close to Robert to make sure that um, he doesn't stray. And he says to Emma, this all just might work. Mind you, Mandy's not a part of this because they didn't want Mandy to get a part, become a part of this. And she's very emotional, so she's not even in this. Somebody calls Mike, and he says he has to go. He goes down, he gets into this car. Micah and Julia are, like, laying up in, like, this funeral pyre type thing, bent up. They have these robes on. And um, Robert makes a speech, Micah and Julia are home. All hail the prophet Joe to lead us down the path to salvation. Praise Joe. They have no idea what they're getting themselves into. And I have the weirdest feeling all these people are going to be by the end of this episode, I mean this season, because Joe doesn't need them. He has quadrillions of followers, as you see. And he knew it as soon as he walked in that he could take over, and he damn sure took over. So Carrie arrives to Ryan's apartment. Ryan's not mad at her. The past few days have been rough. Um, they order food for them. Um, she's about to leave when they start kissing. I guess she and Ryan are going to have sex. But I guess Carrie must have forgotten that anybody who basically goes to bed with Ryan, for the most part, uh, ends up dead. If Emma is the Black Widow Spider, 
Ryan is just the regular spider. So um, it's just the, the, the poisonous tarantula or whatever. Black, brown recluse, basically. So Mike um, gets a bag, has a bag over his head. And he's riding in the car with these guys that look like U.S. Marshals. Only remember that because I used to watch In Plain Sight. And they have like that big thing or whatever. So they're taking him. And you see this Afro-American guy. Um, he had been on another, I think he was on season one. So they go into the room, they go into another room, and who do you see with a short haircut? It's Miss Claire Carroll. Yes, guys, Claire Carroll is in Witsec, which I kind of figured out. I didn't think she was dead because, again, we never saw her body. And one thing about TV shows, if I don't see your body, you're not dead to me. I.e. Merle Dixon from Walking Dead. When I didn't see his body, I was like, Merle's still alive. He's coming back. And he did, and Claire is back. Okay. Micah's an idiot. Micah should have seen what was coming. Julia tried to tell him, but Micah was a megalomaniac. You're no Jesus. That whole song. Yeah, you're not in it. I keep thinking of that Incubus song, Megalomaniac. He's a megalomaniac. He was not paying attention. He was so enamored with Joe Carroll. And Julia saw straight through him. But these crazy, powerful men never listen to the women. But, um, <laughs> anyway... Here we go. So, um, Claire being back um, is an awesome thing, but that also means that she might just pop up on Justified soon. Yes, uh, Natalie Zia is on Justified as well. So, thanks guys for tuning in. And I'm Horace. I'm losing my voice. I'm going to go calm it down because I just did two reviews tonight. So, thanks guys for tuning in again. Check me out at SageValentine at Twitter.com. Also, my blogs, The Truth Is on WordPress, and I hope you can handle it on blogger.com. Definitely check through that. It's a lot of old blogs that I did when I was in my uh, early 20s. <clears throat> They're still kind of relevant to today. Whew. Voice is going. So, um, until next week, and next week is yet another chapter of Crazy. So, here this is Sage Valentine, definitely signing off of the Crazies, a.k.a. the following. Have a nice night, everybody, and have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys back on Wednesday for Survivor. <laughs> Bye, guys. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>